from the Sheba Bar in the Maidan Hotel. I'm Joe Christofak on behalf of AmWestEntertainment.com and AmWager.com. And, of course, I am joined by Captain Incomparable, the ever-magnetic in Dubai, even doubly so, Pat Cummings. And, Pat, you are in your natural habitat. This is the Dubai World Cup preview, and it's going to be a fantastic night from start to finish. Uh, Joe, it's it just the fields are drawn, the post positions are known, the morning line is out, the free pass performances are there. Uh, the race course is directly behind us. We're ready. Maidan is getting ready. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal day, night, overnight, depending on where you're watching this from. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Well, Pat has mentioned during the course of the videos we've been doing over a couple of different carnivals now that coming to Dubai and experiencing it for yourself is something that everyone should try to do, particularly if you're a racing fan. And I can now attest to that, Pat, because it's been a great week so far. The best is yet to come. Really looking forward to Saturday night, not only for the experience, but obviously for the racing. We've got $27 million in combined purses. We've got the $10 million Dubai World Cup. We've got horses coming from, I believe, 13 different countries if uh, I don't stand corrected there. And um, it's going to be a star-studded night, but there are also some price shots to sink our teeth into as well. Yeah, and there's a ton of information that's available to players, not just in this video, Joe. We're talking about the track is data on the AmWest site, on the Dubai Racing Club site, free pass performances. We've got uh, the analysis and selections, which will be available at amwestentertainment.com, on DubaiRaceNight.com, live video, and we even have a live chat. Yeah, it's going to be sensational. Our live chat will be on amwestentertainment.com. You're going to need to go to the page where it says live chat, which would obviously make sense. Open two windows so you can get the video and the live chat. It's going to start at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can share opinions with horse players worldwide, Pat, and it's a, it's a great forum for people to talk about the races and perhaps increase their opinions and share ideas with other horse players. Yeah, and we have a lot of duties as well, Joe, so our participation a lot of times will also get dropped in through Twitter as well. Right. So uh, we've linked Twitter into that as, so, so you'll be able to really follow along with that. It'll be phenomenal. All right, Pat, without further ado, let's, let's jump it. into the action. Million dollar race, uh, thoroughbred wise, to kick things off. It's numbered as race number two, the Godolphin Mile, sponsored by Maidan Sobha. And we've got a star studded field here, but there are a couple of horses that stand out a little bit, at least morning line wise. The favorite is the Philly Sharuk. She beat the boys twice at the carnival. You've got Variety Club, who had the unbeaten streak snapped by Sharuk last time out. And then, of course, you have Soft Falling Rain, who has a prep coming into this race. He's a defending champ. Yeah, and, and he was not going to be 100% for last for that last run. Don't forget, he was also drawn in the car park. He was drawn 14 there for that run. That was a Mahabal Shabal, not under his best distance, Joe, at, at 1,200, now back to 1,600. And he, as Mike DeCocca said, has just turned the corner. Last year, he won this race drawn 13. So I think he gets a much better setup here. She rocks a horse, of course. There's just no argument about that. She loves the Tapita. She loves 1,600. But she tracked down Variety Club last time, and... Variety Club may have quote unquote bounced a little bit off of that massive effort in the fire break. There's no argument there. But I just feel like she's been drawn into these races, drawn into the Maktoum Challenge. She got drawn into the pace of the fire break with Variety Club up there. And if you're going to draw someone into it, you could very easily also draw Soft Falling Rain into it this time. At the end of the day, I think Soft Falling Rain is a better horse than Sharuk. And that's why I've gone with Soft Falling Rain to win the Godolphin. Yeah, I'm with you here, Pat. I just think that the prep race sets him up perfectly for the added distance of the mile here. And like you said, he should fire a huge shot. Sharuk is definitely relentless on an all-weather surface, and it's tough to poke holes in her. It'll be a, an interesting addition. If I were to throw a long shot in there, yeah. maybe Alaval, who you know I'm not a huge fan of necessarily against top competition going a mile and a quarter, but cutting back to a mile may finish with some strength. Yeah, I think that's something we need to do with every race, Joe, is to put just a, a price play out there just in case. For me in that race, it's a Lamario, number 16, who ran very well in the Mach Tomb Challenge first up. He is really going to be ignored on the tote and certainly in the U.K. books as well, where he is ignored right now as one of the longer prices. Lamario, granted a bad draw, but to run a good placing, I think he could. All right, let's double the distance in race number three to two miles. It's a Dubai Gold Cup sponsored by Ella Tura Motors. And, Pat, the morning line favorite in here, and pretty much a standout, at least to me on paper, the number seven cavalry man, an impressive victory in the Nat Al Sheba Trophy last out, just won with something in reserve that day. Uh, he's going to be probably a relatively short price in here. Uh, what do you think of Cavalry Man and uh, the chances of others to beat him? You know, he, he wins his, his local debut this season, by more than five lengths. 
Star Empire decided to come across to the stand side rail as Christoph Sumianus sometimes uh, inclined to do and stayed on enough for second to be beaten five lengths despite making that move in the stretch. Uh, I really like Cavalryman. Won this race last year by three lengths coming off of a prep in the City of Gold. He got a prep over a more appropriate distance for him. To me, uh, he is the horse. Uh, I've gone so far as to make him the Amwager best bet of the day. Uh, I think he is the likeliest winner of the day. There are some questions about some other low-priced horses, some short horses later in the card, in the sense that some of the competition is a little bit better. In this race, on this track, on this day, I think Cavalryman is the closest thing to a sure thing. I think a lot of people are going to see a big field. They're going to see horses who've run over this distance before. Cavalryman is so consistent in Dubai. I've, I've got with him. Yeah, I've echoed those sentiments as well. I think he's a standout in this field. Maybe some gimmick horses to round it out. Joshua Tree back on turf, second off the break here. And Seismos, the uh, yeah, German campaign horse and Irish bred horse, I think has some upside. Yeah, he, he, he ran in this race last year, but it was first up. He's had a prep back in Germany, granted over weak company, right. etc., but I think just the leg stretcher does perhaps bring him into this race a little bit more if there's a long shot, if someone gets overturned, or if Cavalryman you know, pops a fever in the saddling paddock, uh, maybe Seismos. Right, okay, let's move on. Two million dollars, the purse, mile and one three uh, mile and three sixteenths, uh, the distance and uh, the way the, uh, the Americans rate their races as far as ground goes. The UAE Derby sponsored by Saeed and Mohammed Al-Nabuda Nabuda group. <laughs> And, uh, Pat, this is a, a competitive race, so to speak, but there are two that are mostly the choices of the punters that we would preview or that we would poll. Giovanni Baldini, who's actually nominated to the American Triple Crown, 5-2 to two morning line favorite. Long John, one of the three four-year-olds in this race. Close second choice at odds of 3-1 to one for Charlie Appleby and Godolphin. Um, splitting hairs. I think potentially, Joe, uh, Look, Long John, the best local here, he's an older horse, too. He's a Southern Hemisphere three-year-old. Mm -hmm. He is a classic winner in Australia in the Caulfield Guineas. But the statistic of the meeting, and you have to take this into account, is that over the last year in Dubai, over the, this season here, Chainer Charlie Appleby, six from 39, first up. All subsequent runners, his horses are combined 0 from 26. The closest he's come is second, Ah Tug in the Maidan Sprint was a close second. But, uh, you know, Shea Shea held him off. If he had won... And they beat one from 26. You know, so uh, I, I can't explain it. That's two years in a row that horses that are stabled out there have that statistic. To me, Giovanni Boldini is a legitimate World Cup chance, or excuse me, a legitimate Kentucky Derby chance. I backed him at 100-1 to 1 in Las Vegas. Uh, I thought he could be winning this race for months. Uh, he ran incredibly well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He was a horse who uh, you know, probably went too soon after Bobby's Kitten. In the, in the juvenile turf that Alstrip came and run him down on the final furlong. And what does Bobby's Kitten come back to do? A winner at Tampa Bay Downs. And pretty impressively, too. Mm -hmm. I think we might see him in the in the bluegrass in two weeks uh, when you and I are probably back in Kentucky and not here overlooking uh, May Dine. <laughs> so I can't wait for that. But in the meantime, Giovanni Boldini for me is the horse. I'm going to throw out the Cuptado. Yes, that's my long shot, yeah, too. Yeah, Doug Watson's horse, uh, he's been very positive that he's turned the corner since he's had him. And here's the thing. This is a horse who's already run a mile and a half mm -hmm. in the uh, third in the Carlos Pellegrini. It is the best race in South America, the Carlos Pellegrini, or at least in Argentina. Uh, and he did it against older horses, and he was a closing third. Could he shock? Maybe. I give Aiden O'Brien the shot here to make it three consecutive UAE derbies. I respect the stat that you gave on Charlie Appleby. Obviously, Long John raced in the 2000 Guineas on February 13th, did not race after that. This is second up. That's the statistic you mentioned, but visually impressive. I mean, this horse won so easily. Like you mentioned, the Southern Hemisphere three-year-old, I think, does have the maturity advantage over Giovanni Baldini. I think those two can go either way. I agree with you on Cuptado. Asmar Broke has made the mistake, maybe has some upside. He's one other horse to watch. Yeah, he's beaten up on the local company. I don't think that there's much to say about it. I think we will see him later in the year on turf in Europe, maybe even the U.S. Asmar. Uh, this, to me, though, it's, it's Ireland again. All right, a straight five furlong grass race, the Alquaz Sprint, and powered by IPIC. That goes off, as I mentioned, as a fifth race, a million-dollar purse. And uh, the odds of 
him drawing the 12 post are 12 to 1. Shea Shea, he loves the outside. Yeah. Uh, Christoph Sumian obviously tries to get there no matter what post he's drawn in. Now he doesn't have to do any work to get there, and he's on the best horse, and he's even money in your yeah. running line. Let's go back and queue up the mate on sprint from uh, from Super Saturday and take a look back. Shea Shea, uh, you, know, you see the work that Christoph Sumian does to get into the outside. And Mike DeCock said to me uh, yesterday, uh, on Wednesday of this week here at Maidan, uh, that he was probably 80, 85% for that race. And he, he did have to work for it. He's come on. He's fitter for it. And when you have the, the maiden leading international trainer of the carnival here in Mike DeCock telling you that he is by far the best of the day for him, uh, I think that's a sign. This horse loves this course. They have the perfect draw. Something uh, is going to have to go completely awry for him to not run his big race. Tactically speaking, though, and this is the thing, thing that we saw uh, in the Maidan Sprint, that you know, this isn't something that Shea Shea has actually had much of, is, is a lot to run at. The, the pace in these races are normally frenetic, but the Hong Kong horse here, number eight, Amber Sky, eight to one morning line, he knows nothing. All of his wins in Hong Kong have come going down the straight, a thousand meters, reverse direction, no less. That's what he's going to do. He just goes to the front, and it's just catch me if you can. Right. What I think it does is tactically it'll set it up more for Shea Shea. Right. That, everything seems to be going in his favor, but this is a horse race. I'm a DC and man. He's had quite a few carnival runs. He's in great form. He's won two in a row. That horse may be able to round out the exacta. Yeah, I, I've tipped Soul Power second. He's run behind him before. Uh, he only beat him on one of five occasions. Uh, that was at Royal Ascot last year. They're going to have to beat Shea Shea. He's the shortest price on the morning line to start the day at even money. Uh, He's going to take all the beating. Another sprint goes as race number six. Six for a long distance on the all-weather. The Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Golf News. Two million dollars is the purse. Six furlongs is the distance. And, Pat, we have last year's winner, Ronaldo the Wizard. We have the horse that beat him last time in the Mahab Al-Shamal Rich Tapestry. They are 7-2 to two and 4-1 to one in the morning line, respectively. But some potential price shots here. Yeah, we... It, it's rare that in this race we, we have very few international shippers. Twelve of the 13 horses had a race on Tapita this season. That has not happened much. Uh, so let's go back and take a look at the Bahab Al Shamal. A couple horses will highlight. The winner is Rich Tapestry. He had a very good inside trip. Ronaldo the Wizard was tracking up on the front end as well. Russian Soul kind of uh, towards the back here. And then well out the back, Belmont Mast and Jamesy. The pace scenario in this race was very slow. Rich Tapestry and Ronaldo the Wizard were up on the front end, but in five previous runnings of this race, uh, the 800-meter split here was a half-second slower than the next slowest. So this was a really easy run for Ronaldo and Rich Tapestry. Ronaldo needed the run. He had been off since the Dubawi Stakes. And their entire plan, Joe, has been to make the third-up effort the big one. And what happened here last year? Ronaldo won by a neck in the Golden Shaheen. Fourth up. His third up effort was a four-length trouncing in the Mahal al-Shamal. This is a very confident group. Setish Simar says he's even better than he was last year in, for his third up run. Uh, I think Ronaldo the Wizard will repeat. And if you've been following along with the tips, that is now three of the four races we've discussed are repeat winners for being soft falling rain cavalry man. And uh, actually, soft falling rain, cavalry man, Shay Shay, right, and now Ronaldo the Wizard. So of the first uh, five races we've discussed, I've got four repeat winners from last year. Things are going to change a little bit as we move forward. Well, Rich Tapestry did beat Ronaldo the Wizard last time. I thought he did it visually impressive fashion. This is a horse who could improve to second up off the layoff, which uh, began in December at Shay Ten. Uh, in Hong Kong, but if you like Rich Tapestry as a long shot, don't you have to like Sterling City a little bit? Yeah, and I made Sterling City 20-1 to 1 on the morning line and have taken a bit of beating on that uh, from uh, some of the Hong Kong folks. Uh, fortunately, they have their own pools to bet into, and they, they won't get the 20-1 to 1 on the tote. Uh, look, the bottom line is, you make a price like that for the market you think is, is going right. to put the most into it, and maybe he won't be 20-1, to 1, but that's where I, I started him. The problem with Sterling City is he isn't one who's done a lot down the straight. Uh, he has quality form on turf over six. I don't know if it sort of translate here to the all-weather. I just don't know. I'm really not that confident. Lucky Nine, who's a horse he's been butting heads with, uh, 
ran third in this race in previous years. I, I just don't know if it's if it's all that collateral form, but trainer John Moore to say he was bullish about Sterling City is is maybe the understatement of the week. He's incredibly bullish on that horse, and frankly, all of them. So right. uh, I give him a chance, but I just think Ronaldo's a better horse on this surface in this race. For me, it's Ronaldo the Wizard. Behind him, he could be just about anything. Yeah, there's not many horses that have been raced in America that are competing on this card. One of them is Z Bros, who'll be making his third start back off the break, third start of the carnival for Seth Benzel. And I got a feeling that this horse is going to run a big race better than maybe he looks on paper. He moved too soon in his first start. Last start he raced on grass. That's not his game. So if you're looking for a decent price as far as long shots go in the gimmicks, maybe Z Bros can sneak in there. Yeah, not for me, Joe, but... He's going to go forward, and, and I, he could run an improved race, but an improved race, he could be beaten by two lengths right. and run fifth in this race. They were really well bunched at the, at the finish last year. I think Zebros adds pace with my catch, Nawar. They're going to go on with it, stretch the field out. Maybe it does help a horse like Sterling City, but I, I think it's just offering this race on a platter to Ronaldo the Wizard. Race number seven, nine furlongs on grass, half million dollars, Dubai. Duty-free sponsored by... You buy duty free. The morning line favorite here is a horse that uh, North American punters are familiar with. The Fugue who's raced in a couple of Breeders' Cups. You've got Dank, who won the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf last year. Also won the Beverly D at Arlington. You've got the undefeated Versin Gatorex, and you've got a fit and ready to go just away coming in from Japan. Pat, those are the four names I'm looking at. Yeah. Look, let's uh, let's start with the horse who's never lost. Okay, let's start with Versin Getterix, three-year-old champion from South Africa. Two-time winner here at the Carnival. Let's go back to the Jebel Hatta Super Saturday. He sits a very nice trip on the rail. Anaerobio comes off the rail. Both Versin Getterix and Vancouverite, for what it's worth. Anaerobio came off the rail? I, I, I heard something about okay. it. I, I've heard something about it, potentially. Uh, Versin Getterix kind of slips through and has a very easy trip. He, he really did have a very easy trip. There were several of that race that had a very easy trip. What The, the setup of that race was slow. Anaerobio backed the pace down quite substantially. They, they ran much slower than par for that race. So the question to me is, where does the pace sit in this renewal? Because in that last race, if we showed the replay, Trade Storm closes well from the back of the pack, and he had no pace to run into. In this race, we have two horses that will go forward. Anaerobio, and I'm thinking he'll go quicker this time, because Tokai Halo, the Japanese horse, is in here. And that horse knows nothing else but to go forward. Sometimes he stays, sometimes he doesn't. We've ran second in the Hong Kong Cup behind Akid Mafid by going forward. There's going to be pace. Trade Storm in this race last year, who's drawn 14, he's drawn 7. He'll get something to run at. And David Simcock has made it very clear that he was going to need two runs this year to come into his best. Trade Storm upsets the Dubai Duty Fruit. He's also the Amwager value play of the day. There we go. And that's what we kind of alluded to. Maybe some shorter prices early on, but the price to get bigger as we move along. The Fugue and Dank are two horses oh, that are very we familiar. About them. Well, they're very familiar, and they're going to get bet. Yeah, no, they are. Uh, they will get bet. I, frankly, Joe, can't have them. These are phenomenal fillies. With, with a great record and, and are very familiar to U.S. racing fans. Of course, this video, you know, based in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I just don't see them being 100% to win this race. I just don't. The Fuga Shorter were best over 1,800. Dank, no Lasix. Dank against Open Mail Company, I believe for the first time in her career. And they have long seasons ahead of them in England. How could they possibly be 100%? That's a trend that we're going to see through the next couple of races, too. I would agree. Now, the horses coming in from Japan, from Hong Kong, are fit. Most of them are fit yeah. as a fiddle. Just Away is one of those. Just Away is better than ever. Can that form continue on in this race against this competition? I think maybe so. Just Away is going to be my pick. Yeah, Just Away last Gentle Donna two back and had a, a very nice prep run earlier this year. Did have a perfect trip. It's probably going to get another one here. Uh, the only problem is the, the two most recent wins on Just Away's form, you have to go a long way back to find the last time he won. So maybe he's really fresh. Right. Maybe the competition's been a little different. This is a tougher bunch internationally. He's never really been an international company, so to speak. Uh, I give him a shout. But for me, this is a tactics play, and it's trade store. All right, half million dollars and a mile and a half the distance in the Dubai Shima Classic presented by Long Jeans, and this is... 
to me, one of the most intriguing races on the card from a price play perspective. Three to one morning line favorite, Breeders' Cup Turf Champion, Magician. 12 horse at odds of four to one. Gentile Donna coming in from Japan. You've got some other horses in here with a legitimate shot. A horse Americans are familiar with, Twilight Eclipse, perhaps in the best form of his career at the age of five. Pat, what are you looking at? I was trying to figure out the pace scenario here because Gentle Donna runs forward but doesn't really lead. And she ran forward last year but was hung out wide. And when she drew 15, I thought the same thing. Sears to Zay, drawn 15. He'll probably go forward. But none of these horses really are going to lead all that often. And I was looking and trying to figure it out, and then I realized that Seamus Heffernan is booked to ride festive cheer, who's making only his fourth lifetime start in this race. And I've added one and one, and it equals uh, fast. Uh, festive cheer, to me, is a rabbit in this race. He is going to go and burn on the front end and try and set a, a quick gallop, I think. So, uh, in doing so, I think it's going to potentially help some of the closers in this race. Uh, so I, I think we need to, to do some discounting first. And at least in my estimation, go back to the City of Gold and just take a look at this for a second. Uh, stretch run of the City of Gold. Excellent result. Meandra, Mount Athos, a grouped, bunched grouping at the finish. Uh, I just can't have any of these horses to come back and win. It's always been a muddling bunch. The City of Gold winner has never come back to win this race, ever. And even though Cavalryman was third in it last year, came back to win the Gold Cup. Meandra is a horse who has a better draw now. Uh, and one of our track of stats of the day, Meandra, last time out, covered 14 meters more than the first three finishers. He's a placing chance to me, Joe. Meandra. Uh, I'm going back to tactics again here in this particular race. I know you like a local horse. Can't have the local horses here for me. I'm going with Denim and Ruby, the Japanese four-year-old filly who almost won at the Japan Cup. She'll settle way out the back. The Coolmore boys think that Festive Cheer will help set it up for Magician. I think it helps the Japanese filly even more, Denim and Ruby, to pull a bit of an upset. I can see your point on the local horses. I think excellent result is progressive. The horses won two in a row. I think the horse is continuing to get better. The price is right for me on excellent result. Mars is kind of a funny horse. They put the hood on last time. It didn't help. He got off to a sluggish start. He finished a lot better than it looks on paper. I think this is a horse that could make a big move forward in this race as well at odds of 20 to 1. And I think Twilight Eclipse, talking about horses that are going to go forward, they say they're going. They're going to try to get early position in this race. And he's as good as he's ever been. I know he's not great when it comes to American turf horses, but I think he'll run a big race. I think that makes Denim and Ruby even more dangerous. Uh, and frankly, it makes Magician more dangerous. I just don't think that uh, Magician is going to uh, be 100% uh, similar fashion. Even though St. Nicholas Abbey won it last year, Magician got a perfect setup in the Breeders' Cup turf. Uh, Ryan Moore learned his lesson from Giovanni Boldini in the juvenile turf. He realized the way the course was playing and how they had to respect pace, so to speak. Uh, I I'm going with Denim and Ruby, who was trained by Katsuhiko Sumi, who has trained a Dubai World Cup winner in Victoire Pisa. And speaking of which, next up, the Dubai World Cup. The granddaddy of them all, $10 million a mile and a quarter on the all-weather surface. And we've got a very evenly matched field here. And I know, Pat, you were struggling over the course of the week with who the morning line favorite might be. You were maybe leaning towards Ron the Greek, but when he drew post position number 16, very difficult to do. He's at 5-1 to one in the morning line. Or that's taking a lot of action overseas with the bookmakers. Is ruler of the world. He's installed as your lukewarm Nine to two morning line favorite here, but many chances abound. Yeah, it, it is a World Cup this year. There is no argument about that. A very diverse group, and what you have are some local tapita specialists, some international turf horses, a Saudi-based former American dirt horse who's given it a shot. I couldn't make Ron the Greek the favorite after he drew sixteen. Does he have a chance? Everything has to go one hundred percent correct, but it's horse racing, and I don't think that's going to happen. Let's start with the local horses, because we, we the Hong Kong contingent has to get discussed. Let's start locally first. Go back to the Maktoum Challenge. Prince Bishop on the rail, Sinshawas and Surfer drawn 13 and 14. Uh, a host of others that, that, that were in this race, African Story, Cata Mountain. They were a bunched group at the finish last time through the stretch run. Prince Bishop gets the split. He saved all the ground. Very impressive performance. He also pulls up pretty quite short out of this race. It leads us into our third track of stat of the day. Sinshawas covers 22 meters. 
more than Prince Bishop. Sanchavis gets what we would define through track as, as an inverse or a reverse trip. It's the opposite trip of what he had last time. Drawn wide, covered all the extra ground, now he's drawn inside, he'll go close. I think he's a very dangerous horse in this race. Now, internationally, the Hong Kong Raiders, you've been following them all week. Uh, they're very keen on their chances. They look good on the track, too. Akid Mafid, military attack. They pick and choose sometimes when they win. They're not always 100% consistent. Sometimes they truly get a prep run. But they are the talking horses here of the week. The Irish horses don't get out until a day before, so no one really talks all that much about them. If I had to pick one, I'd pick Military Attack over Akeem Mathid. I think he's a better horse. Yeah, I think both of them have a big shot. And I think people are going to look at the fact that Akeem Mathid got beat last out, finished fifth, was the even money favorite. Yeah. People bet off what a horse does in their last race quite often. The races before that were very good. I think he's going to bounce back. He has looked incredible all week during his track work. And, you know, I'm looking for a price here. I can't go with someone, you know, that's going to get bet at less than 10 to 1. And I think you're going to see Akeem Mafid every bit of the 10 to 1 that you put yeah, him in Yeah, to at. our American players, too, uh, you know, you have a ruler of the world, Aiden O'Brien, an Investec Derby winner, a champion stakes third in a very good effort, and people recognize the name, the connections, etc. Of course, half of this horse has been sold to Qataris, uh, mm -hmm. Al-Shakab Racing. Good luck. Here's the thing. This horse coming off a long layoff. Only twice in the 18-year history of this race has a horse run uh, and won the World Cup, not having had a start the same year that they came to right. the World Cup. You need to be fresh, especially on this Tapita, fit over fresh in this race. Animal Kingdom came off a 49-day break to win it here. Yeah. The other three winners were all starting within 30 days of the race. This isn't the world's best overall form race. There have been some wildly talented horses who haven't run their race here. Yeah. So, ruler of the world to me, I'm completely ignoring him. I'm throwing him out. The only way he's in my plays is when I hit the all button for third or fourth. That's when he slips in for me. Pace. Hako Taramai, Japanese uh, dirt runner. And Muka Drum, I think, will go forward. And we'll see Senshawas tactically ridden up uh, towards the front as well. Surfer might get a handy position. Mm -hmm. He is an outside placing chance. I don't really give Cat a Mountain or Ron the or, uh, even Red Cadeau now drawn 14. He's going to have to work out a, a trip. Uh, Vancouverite, can't really have him. Belshazzar, uh, not really a fan of his. He sucked along in the J Japan uh, Cup dirt when Hoko Teramai got a shockingly awful ride. Side glance, he's looked good here this week. Mm -hmm. Ran fourth in this race last year. I give him a shot to get in the frame. And the final horse to mention here, African Story. Bash his head against the stalls yeah. at the start uh, of the Maktoum Challenge. I think he could improve. At the end of the day, who is your World Cup pick? Well, I'm going to go with my first instinct, which is the confidence of the people coming in from Hong Kong and how he's looked on the track all week. A key to feed for me. But like I said, there are a lot of different ways you can go. and It should be, no matter what happens, a fascinating addition. I go with Senshawas in the Dubai World Cup, but of course all analysis at DubaiRaceNight.com and WestEntertainment.com where you can review kind of the full selections as well. And don't forget you can play another Derby Wars free contest. We congratulate Super Saturday contest winner Joseph Palmasani of New York. There will be other Dubai contests at DerbyWars.com as well and go to HorseRacingNation.com if you are a horse racing fan in general. Lots of information there. Pat, we're going to put your picks up on the screen right here. Quick recap of your selections, and we're going to go to the Bankroll Challenge, which personally I'm looking very forward to. So the first five races of the day, short prices for me. Saw Falling Rain, Cavalry Man, Giovanni Boldini, and Shea Shea. Ronaldo the Wizard becomes one of four horses to repeat. It gets a little pricier after that for my taste. Trade Storm, Denim and Ruby in the Duty Free. Send Shawas off of that inverse trip with the data. Send Shawas for me to win the World Cup. Pat and I agree with our selections in three of the first four races. Saw Falling Rain, Cavalry Man, and Shea Shea. Long John over Giovanni Baldini for me in the UAE Derby. Rich Tapestry to make it two in a row here. Just away, I think, gives Japan a victory. Excellent result. I think he's getting better and better and better, and he's going to be a big price. And Akid Mafid for me from Hong Kong to win the Dubai World Cup in what may be a 13-horse photo finish. Let's get the unpleasantries out of the way. I will admit... Joe, much better than me in the Bankroll Challenge this year. The numbers from our man behind the scenes, Danny Christofek, up on the screen. 
You see what he's done. Congrats to you, Joe. You've beat me in the bankroll challenge through Super Saturday. I tip my hat. All the respect to you, Pat. Obviously, you're going <laughs> for it more. You're going for bigger prices. I'm betting a lot more conservatively. And you could have had a lot more if you took just some Just getting my feet wet. But it proves that somebody that doesn't follow international racing can jump right into the carnival, follow along, look at the races, look at the strength of field, watch the races visually, and still do well on the wager. So what you're saying is I, 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 I blew it on purpose. <laughs> Good for you, Matt. Well, it comes down to Dubai <laughs> World Cup night, Pat, and let's uh, let's get a quick look at what your selections um, as far as putting money forward yeah. and the and the wagering as strategy. I get up. bold early, a $36 pick three. Needless to say, I had $36 left over. Uh, cavalry man, Giovanni Boldini, Shea, Shea, straight across there. And then we'll do a pick three, a pricier play. Races 7, 8, and 9 to round out the day. The numbers are up there. I'm kind of keying on Trade Storm, but I am using Verse and Getterix. I am using Just Away. And then we go three deep. Throw me Andre in there, but then with the two Japanese horses in the City of Gold, and then five deep in the World Cup with Senshawas as the, the horse I like. Trifecta in the uh, Trifecta in the uh, Shima Classic, Denim and Ruby on top with a couple underneath with all for third, and then two trifectas to round it out. Keen Senshawas either first or second with a couple others. And true to form, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to take my four best price shots and bet 10 to win, 40 to place on all of them. Rich Tapestry, race six. Just Away, race seven. Excellent Result, race eight. And Akeem Mafid in the Dubai World Cup, race number nine, to round things out. Don't forget, you can follow Pat on Twitter at DubaiRaceNight.com and track his racing. You can follow me at Joey Decay Racing. And additional parade ring analysis that uh, should be very useful coming in as well from Thorough Media on Twitter. Another one to follow. Should have that. I'll be tweeting as much as the uh, signals around may not allow to happen. So uh, catch up on that. Reach out. Ask us some questions. We'll be happy to help as much as we can. But it's a busy day. It's a fun day. It's great. Glad you've been able to come along. Thanks to Am Wager, Am West, uh, for sponsoring the videos throughout the course of the season. It's been phenomenal. The chat, 840, excuse me, 845 hey, Eastern yeah. Time is when it will open. First post is 910. For Thoroughbreds, yes. For Thoroughbreds, uh, for the Dubai World Cup night. I hope all of you have enjoyed all the videos Pat and I have provided during the course of the carnival. We thank Am Amwager, we thank Am West, and we thank uh, everyone who's here and has been so hospitable. And we're looking forward to a fantastic edition of the Dubai World Cup, and it's been a great carnival through and through. Absolutely. Uh, good luck. On behalf of Pat Cummings, I'm Joe Christopek. As Pat said, good luck.